life as we uncover their stories here on Cover Story. The various transitions of quarantine had introduced us to different interesting things we call quarantine. Among these are learning how to cook, starting your own vlog and online stories, and even achieving new looks. We are also inspired by the different stories of heroism and of Good Samaritan, which stood up with their selfless intentions. In the light of current events, we are inspired to give you interesting conversations. I'm excited to run the Frontliner series of Cover Story for us to learn what it's like to be them as they bravely showcase their love to their profession. For our pilot episode, I would like to talk to someone who I know personally. More than a faculty member of Sri Mahati, I would like to talk to him about being a doctor who committed himself in a quarantine facility in the metro. Help me welcome Dr. Michael Angelo Subuga. Hi! Thank you. Hello. Good evening. Kumusta ang buhay lately? Okay naman kasi right now I'm juggling between teaching and the doctor. So far kaya pa naman silang dalawa but things can get so demanding sometimes. Pero sa awa ng Diyos, okay naman. <laughs> Paano mo siya binabalance? In terms of balance kasi, fix naman yung schedule natin. When it comes naman dun sa quarantine facility, I mean, uh, yung trabaho naman dun is hindi naman siya ganun nakakapagod. However, high risk kasi. Uh, when it comes to balancing these two, sanay na kasi ako. I think I've been doing this for almost ilang taon na. Compared with my life before quarantine and my life right now, I can say na mas madali actually ngayon. I have adapted pretty well with the situation. And so far, uh, kaya naman. <laughs> Buti naman. Um, can you take us to where you are working? Ano ba nangyayari within the day? Two days a week, I allot myself in a quarantine facility in Pasig wherein we admit mild asymptomatic patients naman. So they don't have any chance of going to an acute respiratory distress syndrome. So they are all stable. So the chances of getting them into an ICU is very slim. However, it's still COVID. We're still talking about COVID. You know? So there's still a chance. When it comes to other days naman, doon ko na ginagawa yung trabaho natin sa CEU. You know? So I, yun ang medyo nakakapagod actually. Kasi it requires thinking. You know? Siyempre, di ka naman magtuturo nang di ka nagbabasa. No? Even as teachers, alam mo yan, Jean. No, we have to study our lesson before we teach it to the students because they can smell if you are <laughs> unprepared. No, and it's very oh. and at kahit na ito ay online class, the dead air is deafening. No, so kasi kahit na kamute sila, hindi pwede maging mute ka din na magstop ka. No, so kasi nararamdaman nila na if you are unprepared. So with this given naman na uh, synchronous type of learning with the students, okay naman no, na kaka-adjust naman ako. I do my work in the morning, but still, nakapa- syempre, masarap matulog minsan. No? Nakaka-puslit tayo ng mga ganyan. How about in the quarantine facility? Ano yung typical na nangyayari sa isang? Sa quarantine araw, facility sure. kasi, in a, in a day, so we are separated from the patient. Uh, when I clock in my, to my duty. Nandun lang ako sa isang area and it, in, and it is a safe zone. No? So all of, the, all of the items there are malinis, we are all wearing masks, and then para kaming call center. We coordinate patients coming in from the community. We coordinate patients coming from the, our COVID hospital which is a Pasig City Charles Hope. So kung may dadalhin sila sa amin, it's all through via the phone. And then everything is like telemedicine, even the history taking is via the telemedicine. What ang hindi lang namin magawa is yung physical examination kasi bawal. No? We do that from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Then usually by 6 p.m., doon na kami nag-arounds. So each of us, we all have our own building. We're not talking about wards here. We're talking about building. So the patients will range from the minimum of at least 40 per doctor. So matatapos kami ng rounds from 6, it will, we will last. Depende kung madaldal yung pasyente, kung madami siyang hinaing. No? So, matatapos kami by like 10 p.m. And then by 10 p.m., siyempre doon pa lang kami kakain. And then, hindi pa natatapos doon, may tatawag ulit. Kami. Kasi 24 hours yan eh. Yung ambulansya, may mga pending pa na darating. So, in a way, nakakapagod siya. Kasi puyat kung kaya mo talaga siyang i-maneuver yung oras mo na yun. 
ayos. Kayang-kaya naman din. So, yun, nasabi mo na rin, dangerous, puyat. Mm-hmm. What gives you the moving forward attitude? Just considering the numbers are getting high, uh, there was a time also that your colleagues asked for a time out, and then healthcare workers are also greatly affected. So, what keeps me moving forward is that um, if there's a time wherein uh, talagang tinatawag ka ng kung kulin mo, it's this time, it's the pandemic time. No? At tayo kasi may choice tayo to reject the call. No? Uh, kung pwede tayo na huwag mag-duty, like for example, dami mong kilala, hindi na nag-hospital, and it's fine. Kasi nga naman, we're talking about lives here. But made me different from the others kasi uh, I think the feeling of yung nobility natin, no? I think we're being called into our into duty. When you reach 30s kasi, you're looking for passion in your job. You're looking for something bigger. You're, th- you're looking for something more. Um, Imbis na ito, parang ito kasi yung gagana sa'yo. Eh. I think with the proper PPEs, with the proper knowledge, precaution, the mode of transmission, that's what I kept on telling the other people. You do not have to be afraid of the coronavirus infection if you really know the mode of transmission of the virus. No. So, unfortunately, hindi naman lahat alam yan eh. No? Kayang-kaya eh, as long as you wash your hands, your protective mask, so all day, huwag siya tatanggalin. Still, you treat each other, you treat all person as an infected person. You treat all materials as a biohazard. Hirap pala, no? So, mm-hmm. nga, we, with all the glams of being a doctor flash in mga sa movies o kaya sa TV, ang ganda ng, ng, ng pag-picture nila ng doctor eh. Pero gaano ba kahirap maging doctor? Aren't you scared? Aren't you scared for your family? Kasi Iris, tapos so uh, uh, Well, oo. Oh, kasi the, 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 I don't watch the medical dramas. Probably because I'm sick of it. Na. Kasi I am living the series already. And then when I watch TV, ayoko naman lang yun ipapanood. So, what I do is I only watch light-hearted series, you know, comedies, drama. So, for the non-medical personnel, mm. it's like a feather in the hat kapag ikaw ay graduate ng doctor. In reality, there's really a more story. There's really more backstory to it. Ako kasi, I have a... Uh, nag-rent na ako ng place where I will stay as long as I'm working in the COVID facility. So, uh, so medyo nakaka-planning kasi, for example, ako, nag-lecture ako na isang beses. So, kinabukasan, nag-duty ako sa hospital. Ano, parang din, I kept on coughing. So, habi ko, hindi, wala ito, wala ito. And then, one day na naman nag-last. Parang naman fever, no? <laughs> Tama ko. Pero <laughs> pala kasi iba yung anxiety na dala nun eh, di ba? Iba yung anxiety nga. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we can't even go out in a scrub suit. Kasi kahit sabihin mo na it's been alone na to protect the healthcare workers, yung simple yung bibili ka lang sa 7-11 pag titinginan ka na. Kami lang talaga yung mag-adjust. Just to spare us from the commotion, the arguments. No, mag-base na lang kami. Hindi naman mahirap pag-base. So talagang sacrifices yan. But aside from those sacrifices, what rewards do you get from doing your call of duty? Well, ako kasi, sa reward, wala naman masyado din. I'm doing this because uh, maganda kasi siya sa resume, sa curriculum detail. <laughs> Yun na yung parang benefit mo eh. No? Where were you in the time of pandemic? And I'm not invalidating the the efforts of other doctors. We're talking about COVID here. no So, when we say COVID, uh, pandemic, no one is spared, kahit ang healthcare workers. So, kung may choice ka naman din to reject, why not? No? It just so happens that for me, my option is CEU and I want to be in practice pa rin. I want to keep in line with my profession. And I cannot do that in a hospital. Kasi sa hospital, di pinapasiliti and a hospital, when when I do my duty in the hospital, everyone has like, I, I, I'm like having a big question mark over my head. Sino dito ang may COVID? Sino ang wala? Kasi some will just come in for an, for a loose bowel stool movement for like 12 episodes. And then, hindi natin alam, no? di ba yung malamang pioneering study ng COVID noon, na it was a sign pala, it was a symptom pala of COVID, diarrhea. No? Daily na lang yun. May iba ba? Sipo na lang, nawalang ganun pang amoy. Diba? So, at least sa hospital kasi parang they're all infectious. Ako, sapin mo pa. At least sa quarantine, alam mo nang positive sila. Hindi na, nasa iisang lugar lang sila. So, medyo mahirap nga talaga yung trabaho if it's both mentally and physically taxing. So, what one piece of advice can you give? Lalo din sa mga gusto maging doctors. Uh, sa lahat lang gusto mag doctors, I don't think the pandemic is the thing uh, I consider mo dyan. No? Mm. Kasi, the fact that you're considering a 
taking up doctor, ang dami mo nang i-consider the financial status, kung ikaw ay babae, anong edad mo na ba, mag-aasawa ka, if you're in a long-term relationship, nakakatawa, na- nakakatawa, pero that will really factor in, no? Kasi syempre, kaya ng wallet mo, kaya ng wallet ng parents mo, pero ikaw ba kaya mo? Or iba naman, kaya ng utak mo, pero ang parents mo hindi kaya. So if, sa lahat ng gusto mag-medicine, sige lang, okay na, uh, there will never be a time when there will be a shortage of doctors. Ay, sorry, oversupply of doctors pala. No? Palagi tayong kulang. Kasi, first, hindi naman lahat sa atin nagsistay dito. Pangalawa, yung iba will go into specialty, like for example, surgery OB. Doon lang sila. No? Hmm. Yung, pero yung nasa front line, on my level, which is a GP level, wala. No, so there will never be a time na mag-oversupply tayo ng doctors. So I think if you were going, if you're going to consider uh, pursuing medicine, then pursue medicine because you want to pursue medicine, not because the idea of an of other people. Make sure also that uh, it is something that you're doing because of noble reasons at hindi dahil sa pera. Kasi kung iisipin mo na gusto ko mag-doctor, mag-doctor kasi gusto ko mayaman, una pa lang, first year pa lang talo ka na. Dapat hindi ganun. You should do everything with your heart into it. Kasi if, you, if you're doing something heartless, then what's the point of doing it? So, ayun, yun lang naman. What has this pandemic taught you about, especially being in the quarantine facility, what has this What has it ah, okay. I'm not gonna be complicated, no? Kahit magulang mo pa yan, may possibility na itakwil ka talaga. <laughs> Kung nalaman na ikaw ay nagtatrabaho sa quarantine facility. No, it's okay lang naman kasi it's... Ikaw din naman yung mahihirapan, ikaw yung anak eh. So, pag ganun ka problema sa ikaw, 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 ang maghihirapan eh. It's you, it, no? For their safety na rin, kasi they're senior na... Hindi naman sila diabetic, but they are hypertensive. And it, the pandemic has, all, has also taught me that kahit anong plano mo sa buhay, always have a plan B. Ang daming nasirang plano ngayon. No? So, at yung mga plano mo naman, that doesn't mean na hindi na yan matutuloy. You just have to recalibrate and recalculate your plans. Others are taking the pandemic as a sign of not pushing their dreams. Iperson nyo pa din. We're just taking a step back. Sa panang natutunan ko dito ay wala talagang kasiguraduhan ng buhay. Ay, wala talagang kasiguraduhan. Ng... Hindi tayo natakot sa SARS eh. SARS-CoV, sa MERS-CoV. But with COVID-19, almost didn't spare any country. And it killed a lot of people. Tapos tayo dito. Although, uh, mahirap talaga siya kasi walang pioneering study. Everything is in, in a gray area right now. So, walang kasiguraduhan. On a lighter side, mm. aside from yeah. your IG and aside from Netflix, what are your pastime activities in the facility? Well, my pastime activities naman are I jog, I cook. Ayun yun lang. Ayan, so ayan. Thank you very much, Doc Miko, for uncovering your frontliner story. Uh, you will always be a part for prayer for doing what God wants you to do. So, isa namang cheers dyan. Okay. Cheers? Tama ba? Cheers. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you know, we are facing a sad reality. We can't afford to risk more lives as we fight this invisible enemy. Um, it's not easy, but we must continue to follow health protocols. Sabi ng Doc Miko, mask, gear, and let us look out for everyone to lessen the risk. Any last words, Doc? Well, last words to the general public. COVID-19 is something that has that you should be not be taking very lightly. Uh, just because hindi mo nakikita na kakasakit ka, it doesn't mean it's there. It will just take you by surprise. If I were you, wala naman sigurong mawawala kung mag, if you will go in to observe social distancing, uh, proper hand sanitation. Sa lahat ng i-risk nyo, huwag ang health nyo. You risk na your money, you risk na your career, but do not risk your health because health is wealth talaga. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Pagka okay na lahat, sakits na lang tayo. Thank you very much for um, thank you, thank you. Our, our activity. Maraming maraming salamat. So join us again next time as we uncover inspiring stories here on Cover Stories. Thank you. Thank you.